Good morning to all uh, in this webinar. I'm very proud to uh, present today for the very first time a brand new story called Universal Brands Giving Brands Local Relevance. First of all, we have to uh, admit that today we live in a brave new world. As we are witnessing a gravitational shift, a gravitational shift in economic power. All across the globe, we see new economies popping up. Economies that rise at a speed never seen before. If we look at the GDP of all these emerging markets, we see that by 2020, they will, for the first time, overtake the GDP of the developed world. And if you look at companies like Unilever and Procter & Gamble, we already see today that more than half of their revenues is coming from those new markets. New markets in Southeastern Asia, new markets in Latin America, in Eastern Europe, in the South of Africa. All those emerging economies are booming and it's very exciting to see what's happening over there. And of course, a lot of brands, a lot of companies want to grasp those new opportunities that are lying out there. And as we are living in a connected world, a world in which everybody can be connected with everybody through social media, a lot of those brands have the feeling that they can grasp those new opportunities by building global brand tribes through online, through social media. But the question is, is it that easy? Is it that easy for strong global brands to grasp the new opportunities in the new markets? Are global brands really for the win? I don't think it's like that because we see a lot of those strong brands failing when they enter a new market. And why is that? Well, we had exactly the same questions in our minds. We went out to from 20 year executives of international and global brands and we asked them that question. And almost all of them admitted that yes, if you want to be successful today as a strong brand, you need global appeal and you need global scale, but it is as important to gain local relevance, to be rooted in the culture of the markets you want to do business in. And there is even more. It's not only about combining the global and the local aspects to be successful in those new economies. There are also a lot of new things to learn when you want to be successful in those new markets. And I will share a couple of concepts, a couple of things that are going on there, which you need to master in order to be successful as a brand. First one is leapfrogging. An example of that is, uh, from a technological perspective, the fact that in markets like, for example, Brazil, people just skip the PC phase to go online. They immediately jump towards the mobile app. And that's why, if you look at it on a global scale, the real experts when it comes to social media marketing and mobile marketing can be found in Brazil. Another concept is the one of reverse innovation. An illustration of that is how multinational companies who sell laundry products, for example, apply exactly the same tactics in Southern Europe that is suffering from a crisis right now as the ones they use in emerging markets like India in order to make their high quality aspirational brands affordable 
for the losses in those markets for the lower middle class, they offer small packages that only um, allow you to do laundry for one week, but it makes the brands affordable. And finally, there is the concept of innovation through commercialization, something that is especially in Asian markets, it's the way companies innovate. They don't spend months or even years in R&D labs to create a new product. No, they build it, they drill it onto the market, and they make it better in iterative loops based on the feedback that comes back from the first users, from the very first customers. So we may conclude that you need to be a little bit brave in this new world in order to be successful. Because success, even if you are a strong brand, will not come overnight. You will need to dive into the local culture and local relevance to your global brand on the one hand, and on the other hand, there is a lot to learn about the business practices in those markets. That's why I think the global, the formula for global success for brands is having global appeal and global scale, but also having local relevance and gain local learnings. That's why it's maybe better to not talk anymore about a global brand, but talk about a universal brand. A universal brand should be a brand that is built on a universal insight. That's an insight that evokes the same aha, it's me kind of feeling among people from different countries and from different cultures. And around that universal insight, one creates a grand universe that is broad enough to allow local adaptations while still staying true to the universal insight. And finally, companies running universal brands should gain learnings in different markets and try to transfer best practices to other regions in which they are active. So what's important if you want to build a universal brand? The most important thing is getting under the skin of the people in the markets you want to be active in. And there is a great quote about this uh, by Nelson Mandela. Why this is so important. It's if you speak a language a man understands, you speak to his mind. If you speak his language, you speak to his heart. So how are we going to win the hearts of the local people? By getting to know them. How can we really get to know the culture and the markets in a country? Well, a couple of things are needed, a couple of ingredients are needed. First of all, it's important to have dialogues with customers. Figures about the market will not be enough. You need to talk with the people, you need to observe them. Secondly, it will be important to talk with a diverse group, especially if you want to enter large markets like China, well, those countries are so diverse in terms of ethnicities, in terms of social classes and lifestyles. You really need to talk with a larger group of people in order to fully grasp the reality. And you will need to take your time. You cannot get to know a culture, a country, and in all its aspects by just doing a couple of ad hoc studies. You need to be connected with a larger group of people over a longer period of time. And finally, you need a methodology that allows you to be agile, to move fast, to react quickly on what happens in the world. Because that's how it goes in those markets. Everything goes much faster than in the Western world. If we add all of these ingredients up, we end up with a methodology that is, of course, a market research online community or a customer consulting board, like we like to call them. 
It's bringing together a larger group of people on a closed online platform for a longer period of time. And you try to structurally collaborate with them day in, day out. So how can we walk our own talk? How can we successfully run market research online communities in those new markets? Because clients need to adapt their way of doing things. Why shouldn't we do the same as researchers to be successful with this methodology? I will now go over a couple of things that we believe that you should adapt in order to run a successful community in a new market or in a different culture. The first thing is that we, by default, conduct communities in the mother tongue of people. If you don't do that, you learn on nuance on detail, and people are less active on the platform. Secondly, the uh, American anthropologist Edward Hall said, lunch is only a percent of culture. And he is right. It's not only about having a moment or your community, it speaks the language of people. It's about understanding, being able to act with a different culture. And we need to afterwards make great interpretation of what we said in the community. That's why we also if to work with a native modeling, the one that's CX, but knows the culture in all its aspects and also knows the local market situation. We have a global community moderator network in over three countries, and we work together with our moderators to fully understand how it is to do a community in um, a different market. We do that by using a community with them to generate best practices. And I will briefly share five dimensions on which moderator needs to adapt his or her way of working to another culture based on the co-creation uh, we have done with our network of moderators. The first one is incentivization and motivation. Yes, people are motivated by the fact that they can have an influence on a brand, that's true, but in a lot of cultures, monetary incentives are important. Uh, we see that, for example, in Eastern Europe, where it's very important to gain the trust of the participant that you will don't do them any harm, but that they will get their incentive because they see the incentive as a nice extra to their monthly. Secondly, it's important in a lot of those new markets where mobile is the way to access the web to be ready for mobile-only communities. So to have a technology in place and a practice in place that allows you to have people who only access the community through their mobile phones. And that asks, of course, for an adaptation in the way you ask uh, questions, in the way you give people tasks. So you need to adapt your topic guides to the small screen. And when it comes to the topic guides, you also need to adapt the style in which the questions are asked, so the type of tasks you give to people. Because we have learned and seen out of experience that in some countries, people like to share a lot of information about themselves, but in other cultures, they prefer to talk about the group, which is some kind of protective technique to also let them share personal uh, things and elements. Another thing that we have noticed is that in some cultures, they love co-creation. They love to create. In others, they prefer to just give feedback on what already exists. Again, this is something to keep in mind when you're writing up your topic guide. The fourth one is that the role of the moderator is different from culture to culture. In uh, countries like 
China, for example, a moderator needs to slightly push the participants from one task to another. While if, for example, Brazil, the moderator needs to be a peer who just facilitates the discussion and from time to time directs the discussion into the right direction. And finally, when it comes to gamification, something we truly believe in, we see that in some cultures it works better than in others. In Spain, for example, they absolutely love gamification elements in the community. Even to that moderator is to add new if we do an international community, the Spanish moderator needs to invent game elements uh, himself. While in Germany, we limit it because it's less culturally accepted. So, there were five things in which you need to adapt the way of working as a moderator. When it comes to analyzing the content from communities in different cultures, we also see that it's as important to pay attention to how people say things as to what they say. The way they explain things, the way they express themselves, and the images and the metaphors that they use, and the cultural um, background that is in there are sometimes very valuable to really understand how people perceive certain things. And next to that, we also need to walk our own talk. We said to the companies we work for that they need to co-create with their consumers. Well, we as researchers can also involve the participants in the research process and ask them to help us with moderation, to help us with interpreting the data, and to help us with reporting. And that's exactly what we do. And what does that bring to the table? Well, they help us to fill our blind spots. And especially when you're working in a totally new market, this can really be of help. Another thing, uh, we ask the participants from time to time, especially in markets like India, where only a niche of the population has access to the web and is able and willing to participate in market research online communities, we ask the people in the community to become our eyes and ears in society and to observe uh, the, the other people uh, in their environment. So until now, we talked about why it is so important to take a look at what's going on in the emerging markets, both from the perspective of opportunities that are lying out there and from the learnings that are to gain over the day. We also saw that it's so important for global brands in order to grasp the opportunities that they gain local relevance and that they dive under the skin of those new countries and the people within those cultures. And in order to do that, the market research online community can be a great tool. But you need to, just like brands, need to adapt their strategy to the local culture in order to gain local relevance and to be locally successful. You need also to adapt the methodology slightly on certain elements and certain aspects in order to have a successful community. The final one is about how to manage such a universal brand and how to move from global discoveries to local impact. First thing uh, that we see among our clients, and we just finished a global community project for Red Bull in 18 countries, and one of the things that we learned from that one is that it's so important to have a global brand leadership team who can have the global overview, who can connect the dots, who can craft together with us as an agency that universal insight and build that brand universe around it. But on the other hand, the global tech leadership also needs to collaborate constantly with the local teams because they are the ones that will implement the global strategy on the local level. They are the ones that will give the global brand local relevance. And a great example of that is what we recently did for PepsiCo, for the Ruffle brand in Turkey, where a local market research online community allowed the global 
team to implement a global strategy but make sure that all the brand and product activations that were done were absolutely spot on, were absolutely embedded in the local culture. So don't go global, don't go local, go universal. Try to combest, combine the best of both worlds and don't forget to learn from all those new markets, gain best practices, and apply them also in the markets here in the developed world. So this was uh, my story. Um, I hope it was inspirational, and I'm looking forward to your uh, questions.